It's all good having a service agreement in your business, which enables you to get back in front of your existing customers or past customers, to uh, create a recurring income stream within your business, to be able to cross sell and upsell to other products and services, or maybe strategic partners, etc. However, if your team aren't selling it and you're not selling it the right way, then effectively it's a waste of time. In today's podcast, you're gonna learn how to sell your membership programs correctly as trade businesses. It stems on from the first episode in this series, which talked about the different types of membership programs for trade businesses. And it's all part of the series which which we've created on building a recurring income into your business as a tradesperson or contractor or whatever. So it's the second episode and it's all about uh, how to sell basically. Stay tuned for the next episode as well because in that episode we talk a little bit about the marketing behind it and we talk about some of the other things involved in playing the long game when it comes to membership sites. As tradespeople, mind you, this is very specific. Guys, I hope you enjoy this. I'd love to hear your comments and feedbacks. If you're watching this on YouTube or um, on Facebook Live, please leave us some comments. If you're watching on YouTube as well, please hit subscribe and ring the bell. That way you'll get notified of all of the uh, upcoming podcasts that are coming out. Um, look forward to hearing your comments, guys. Enjoy. Today's podcast has been proudly brought to you by Trady Web Guys. Trady Web Guys work with tradespeople only on their websites and marketing solutions to help them stand out from their competition. Everything from web design through to SEO, search engine marketing, content creation, you name it, guys. It is a customized solution for trade based organizations, and it's fantastic. Head across to tradywebguys.com.au forward slash apply, fill in the form and let's have a conversation. Giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Hello listeners and viewers, welcome back to the Site Shed video podcast and you're joining us today for part two of the series that I'm conducting uh, with Parker Williams on uh, creating a recurring income model in your trade business. So we're talking specifically about uh, memberships and service agreements, which is a topic that is comes up from time to time in, in our online community. If you're not part of that community, by all means, head across to Facebook and uh, join the free uh, group. It's the, called the Site Shed. Get in there and be part of that conversation. You'll be amazed at the uh, caliber of conversations that that happen within that community. And to be fair, the fact that the, these conversations did happen in this group, it's kind of spurred me to have these conversations with you, Parker. So <laughs> if you're not in that group, get in there. Now, this is Absolutely. the second episode. We're talking about how to actually sell these membership programs and service agreements to our current customers and our potential customers. In the first episode, we were talking about the different types of membership programs. Guys, if you didn't get a chance to check that one out, uh, go back and listen to it before you listen to this one because um, a lot of what we're talking about in this episode is going to relate to what we discussed in the previous. Uh, We talked about discount plans. We talked about service plans. We talked about membership style models where you're sort of merging discounts, discount plans and um, service agreements and adding value through your strategic alliance and all this kind of thing. Make sure you go check that out. Parker, in this episode, we're talking about um, how to sell these programs. And I think um, as we sort of touched on in the last episode, there is a bit of a like a mindset issue here uh, with approaching this. And I think, to be fair, it is different. It is, it is uncomfortable for a lot of guys out there that are like, well, no, no, I'm just a builder. I don't, I don't want to be selling people into membership <laughs> programs. And I, and, I, and, I realize, and I can understand that, you know, like it is different. And typically when you're trying to sell something like this, it's, it's quite far from what they're used to. So I'm hoping we can break down a, a few of these mental barriers and make people realize out there that you know these these things are this is achievable you can build a membership program into your business or a recurring revenue style you just need to first of all get it get your head sorted out and then second of all you need to uh make sure that you can um create a good offer you know make it a valuable offer yeah so we actually you know one of there's three pillars to a successful membership program and the first pillar is is belief um, every time I get on a phone call before I even jump in and start training and teaching like and structuring a client's membership, we we usually will make sure like they really believe that this is going to help their business. Because if they don't believe it, like their employees aren't going to believe it and their employees aren't going to sell it. 
they're not going to market it. They're not going to talk about it. And then it just kind of goes stagnant and goes quiet. So let's dive into that because that's huge. So let's talk about, let's talk about that whole thing. Like I want to talk about, I want to talk about when they come to you, what their thoughts of a process are, what the revelations are when you can help them see like a bit of a paradigm and Mm -hmm. then I suppose how you can really get them and their team to buy into that whole mindset. Yeah. Well, luckily, usually when somebody's calling me, they, they usually have some belief, like they've either seen or saw, like they saw somebody already doing this or the competitors doing it. So they're thinking like, okay, we got to, we got to implement a membership program in our business. So mm-hmm. luckily there's kind of belief there, but as they start to implement and sell it, they're going to get some objections from customers that kind of takes tears down that belief a little bit. And there's ways to overcome objections. Like in anything you sell, you can overcome objection and sell what you're trying to sell as long as it's a good product or service and it's providing value to the customer. Um, But I think the biggest thing, if you're struggling with believing this, like look around, like every business, if you drive down the road, the highway, and you look at the biggest building, most likely that building is owned by a company that has some sort of membership program or recurring revenue, like insurance, um, real estate, software, like everything that has recurring revenue, like these companies are healthy, like they're killing it. And so I, I like, if you're struggling with belief, I can't really give you belief, but look around and you'll start to see like, well, these companies, they've got recurring revenue and that's, that's kind of the first step. So I think like off the conversations that I've had with, for example, builders, you know, and we've talked about this before and I've never really, I'm not the expert, you know, I'm just thinking out loud when I'm talking to these guys, but you know, I'm trying to say to them, well, how can we re-engage these customers? Like you've built a home for them. You've, you've done it. You've built a deck for them. You've, you know, added a level on their property, whatever. Like how can we get back in their space? And the mindset typically is, well, we can't like it's, it's done. We've handed the job over. We've handed the house over. It's, 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 it's completed, you know, and that's the common yeah. mindset I think with a lot of the guys out there. So like, and I'm guessing that's the common mindset, maybe not with people that are coming to you because of course they're already like, well, we need to get a service agreement. Well, we need to get a membership program. Let's, let's speak, speak with Parker. But like, what about, so in your outreach, when you're talking to companies out there that, uh, and for the majority of listeners and viewers out there that have not yet come to you, they're like, well, I've never really even, I've never really thought of this, but it does make, it does make a lot of sense. Like let's yeah. talk about breaking down some of those mindset barriers. Yeah. Like one of the most common objections we get when we first talk to somebody that's kind of fresh to this is like, I hate, I hate recurring billing. Like that's the hardest one is like when they hate recurring billing, they think the rest of the world hates that. Like, I don't like to be on a monthly or an annual subscription. And the, the way we usually overcome that is just by asking them like, here in the US, it's easy. Cause it's like, well, are you an Amazon Prime member? And they typically say yes. And I'm like, okay, well, why are you, why are you an Amazon Prime member? <laughs> or Netflix, yeah, are you a Netflix user? Yeah, okay. Do you hate it? No. Is your right, phone you on go. a plan? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we usually just use like, what are they, what are they already paying for? Typically the reason why people hate recurring billing is because they paid for something that they're not using and they just right. forget to turn it off and it just keeps billing them and they're not using it. So that's where I feel like we mm. are able to overcome that objection. And so let's run through some practical examples. Like let's talk about, let's just talk about a builder, a residential home builder. So they're coming to you and they're like, okay, well, you know, I saw an ad. I never really thought about this or I listened to Matt's, the, you know, the podcast and I've never really thought about this, but sure. It makes sense. Why, how, how could I implement, how would I go about selling this to the guy whose home I've just about finished building? Gosh, dude, I've, I, I think about like a home builder. So my grandpa was a home builder. He, he owned a construction company in Cedar City, Utah, in the U.S. And, and they, could have, they could have benefited so much from having an ongoing service because they went out of business. When the economy crashed in, in the U.S. and like things got hard, 
like they lost all their money. They lost business. No one was building, like they lost everything. Well, if they would have had some sort of ongoing service that they offered to their customers that they built homes for like home maintenance or like, Hey, we'll come to your house and check the frame. The f- I don't, I don't know what I, it's hard. Cause I don't know exactly what they would be able to provide, but if they literally just sit down and think about what can I help? What else can I help my customer with? You'll start to think of ideas. Like you'll start to come up with, Oh, we could probably, you know, check their, their frame in the basement or their, their foundation in the basement or their pipes or, or heck, like we'll send out a guy to do inspections for heating and air companies and plumbing companies and all these companies to generate leads for those guys. Yeah. And, and have negotiated discounts for those companies that they already have relationships with. That's freaking um, gold, you see, and and something like that. I think a lot of the people that might, that might have been the penny drop moment for thousands of listeners out there, or like they'd be like, "Oh, I never thought of that." Because sometimes yeah. I think, like in their mind, they're thinking, "Well, I can't offer them anything else because I've built their home." But the reality is, if you take your blinkers off and you think about what you can offer them beyond what you deliver yourself, we yeah. do this with ourselves. Like we got loads of partners and things that we try that we you know we we steer people towards. You guys being one of them, you know, like, like yeah. it, you can, if you take the blinkers off and you think outside of the box as, a, as to, okay, well, this is great, but where are my customers, where, where, where can I help them looking forward that doesn't involve me? Okay, are they going to need a plumber? Are they going to need an HVAC specialist? Are they going to need an electrician, a, a reliable electrician? You know, like mm-hmm. people, will, people will love that, being able, that you can add, add value to them in that capacity. And like I know from my experience as well, being able to connect people with people makes you look so much better or connect yeah. people with reliable people. I should quantify yeah. because I mean, like, let's be honest, there's nightmare story after nightmare story about unreliable um, tradies, contractors out there. Like when people come to me and they say, Hey Matt, I'm looking for a builder in XYZ. Like I know that I can refer them to reliable people and that's valuable. And, and yeah. I don't do that. And no, we don't monetize that at all. But I know that what goes around comes around. And yeah. it does. What goes around comes around. Like I can rely, refer reliable people to people that are in need for them. And eventually it will come back. Yeah. Well, like a builder, I'm, I'm just thinking about a builder right now. And they're probably thinking like, well, why would I want to keep going back to their house every year? And it's like, well, guess what? People move like every five to 10 years when those people want to move again and build a new house or they move into a house and they want a portion of the home refinished, who are they going to call the person that they've been in contact with? Or if you, if they haven't been in contact with you, like they're going to start searching again and find somebody else. So like you got to keep a relationship going. This is like, it's like I'm talking to myself. And I'm glad you said that because I swear to God, when I say this to our clients, because we, we have this same conversation around content, right? And I say, guys, if you can be proactive in the content creation space and you can get people interested and you can educate and nurture them with things that they're interested in and, and it, could be, it could be project hours, it could be like video value ads, it could be mail outs, it could be like a number of different things. But the bottom line is what you just said then, when, they come, when comes the need for when they have the need for whatever it is that you deliver on uh, in the future, like it's, it's a matter of, okay, well, this guy has been in t- contact with me for the last you know, three years. He's never tried to sell anything. He's always just been adding value. Like, or there's Google search where I'm going to try and engage someone that I have no idea who they are. They've never had any, I've never had any involvement with them before. I don't really know the quality of their work. Like, of course they're going to go with the person they know, like, and trust. It's an absolute no brainer. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. And like, why do you think Amazon's the largest business, one of the largest companies in the world? It's because they understand ongoing relationships. Like they know that if they can continue to provide value, like we're always going to shop at Amazon. So there's a, there's a statistic and we've seen this statistic with the customers we've worked with, but so Amazon sells. So Amazon customers that are not members, sorry, Amazon customers that are members of the Prime program spend 2,500% more than non-members. Wow. 
Yeah, no, it's crazy. Like it's more than, I can't remember the exact number, but it's like more than 12% or sorry, 12 times more customers are spending 12 times more with Amazon huh. when they're a member. So with, with the companies we've helped, we've seen people spend two times more up to eight times more than customers that are not members of wow. the membership program. So talk about major increase in revenue. Yeah. <laughs> Just with your current customer base, you don't even need to like some of these companies that that are listening, you may never even have to market to new people again. <laughs> I love this. And this is the th- and this is a conversation that I mean I've said this on the podcast a million times. I say it to clients all the time. The problem isn't with your lead generation, the problem's with your like re-engagement. Yeah. And if and for the guys that put in and, and so we set loads of our clients up now with tools and technology to help them re-engage with customers. And, and admittedly, like when, it, when it's in its infancy and we connect the programs to the, you know, like email marketing programs to their websites and things like that and help them develop a CRM, very, very often they're not quite yet ready to leverage that tool. But the reality is in 12 months or 18 months time when they are ready, like it's ready to go, you know, like if they want to re-engage pe- the people that are already part of that database and already, you know, opted into their list, then it's all ready to fire, you know? So you just got to yeah. pull the trigger, create a bit of a strategy, pull the trigger, bang, and, and, and it happens. And so that yeah. is so important. Like I love, I love that mindset around stop thinking about, um, like so very often people have that churn and burn mentality when it comes to customers. And they're like, we need more leads, we need more leads, we need more leads. <laughs> and, I'm, and don't get me wrong, new leads are super important. But it often falls at the expense of neglecting their existing customers. Like very yeah. often. I would say more often, most often, yeah. you know, very, I've seen very, very few uh, build, uh, trade businesses out there that are doing this well. And we teach it and we help people deliver on this stuff all the time. And it's kind of a revelation, but it's also kind of daunting as well because it's different. You know, they're, they're used yeah, to that yeah. whole churn and burn mentality where we're like, well, okay, how about you stop churn and burning and you start retaining? This is cool, right? So let's talk a little bit about the actual approach Sell. with the selling. Yeah, let's talk about the selling because I think now people out there, I think the pennies drop for a lot of the viewers and listeners out there. Let's talk a little bit now about actual selling these things to your customers. So let's let's do, let's do a couple of examples and let's take the obvious one, right? I'm a, I'm a plumber. I've been out to, I'm a residential plumber. I've been out mm. for a to do some tap washes at home or, or replace a hot water heater or whatever. How would I go about, what's the approach that I would go about to introduce them or bring up the topic of a membership program um, and get the client buying into it, making it valuable enough that they're like, yeah, cool, let's do this. Totally. Yeah, so th- this is kind of where the discount model really plays a big role. Like this, this, is, this is really important. So if you've got a discount, in your plan, selling is is a no brainer for this customer because you're about to show to them this big bill, right? Thousand, two thousand dollar bill. Well, if you're able to show them a two thousand dollar bill and say, "Hey, I can save you fifteen percent today if you sign up for our maintenance program or our membership program," people just say yes. Right. Like it's a no brainer. It's a it's an irresistible offer that you're giving them. Um, you're tapping into the reasons why people buy. They want to save money, save time. They want to decrease pain, right? But the, some of the top reasons why people buy is because they want to save money. Gotcha. So if you can instantly show them like, hey, I can save you $250 right now by signing up for our membership program. Like I can save you 250 bucks or I can save you a thousand dollars, whatever that ends up being. That's that's important. So, so in this instance, it's a cost. So in this instance, you're bringing that membership program up at the point of uh, billing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you can do it before you even start the project, it's even better. So how would that look? Yeah. So like if I, if I'm going to use heating and air, because I've worked in heating and air. So if I go to somebody's house and their condenser has gone out and we identify that it's gone out before we even start the work, We're going to quote them, right? We're going to give them a quote of like, it's two grand to replace this condenser. And, uh, but I can also save you guys, you know, 15% off of this, off of parts and service. Um, If you guys sign up for our maintenance program and, and, and on top of that, 
we're also going to be able to provide you guys um, no after hours billing. You guys will move to the front of the line if you're part of our, our program. Um, you also get two, two tune-ups every year and two free air filters. So that's all included in there as well. So those are bonuses. I'm going to, I'm going to give those to you guys today. If you guys sign up for a maintenance program or you're interested, usually they just say yes. You don't even have to like sell them on all that stuff. Okay. It just happens. So. And so that's a good, that's a, that's a really good example. Now, what, what would, what would some of the objections be in that instance? Would it be, well, am I under a contract? Do I have to renew every year? So on and so forth. I mean, I guess air conditioning is one yeah. of like, that's a no brainer, right? Cause air conditioning, requires air conditions require maintenance and if you don't maintain them they'll break and then it costs you another two grand to replace the bloody deal exactly yeah it's 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 easier in me in like maintenance like i said so the, the common objections though are going to be like i don't really need two tune ups every year and and that one's just hard to overcome like if people don't believe in preventative maintenance it's hard to overcome but the best way to overcome that one is you tell them like well why am i here today data i'm stats. replacing like like I am here today because you didn't do any preventative maintenance. We could help prevent this from happening again. Yeah. I can help save you. Not only today am I going to save you 250 bucks, but in two years when your condenser coil goes out because you haven't been maintaining it, I'm going to save you $2,000 in two years from now. So that you, you're, you're just breaking down a belief and rebuilding it. Okay. I love it. And so when we're talking about pricing, so like we said before, discounting's not great for any business. In fact, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing this, I can't remember where I read it, where I saw it, but in order to, if you apply a 10% a ten discount to a product or service, you need to sell three times the amount in order to recoup that cost. Mm -hmm. So like you said before, um, yeah, we're well, sure you can discount, but you've still got to make sure that you're not devaluing your product, which normally involves okay, well, we're going to raise our prices 15% or whatever it is. Use discounts to your advantage. I hated right. discounts before, but then when I realized like, oh, if I just raise my prices, <laughs> discounts are great. Right. So as long as I think fundamentally, and this is a conversation that we have a lot over at Trading Mate Pro in the very first month when people sign up, we're like, okay, you know, we make them get crystal clarity over their numbers because very often they'll come, mm -hmm. I mean, I'd say, 99% of the time when you know people come through, they're like, oh, well, you're not charging enough. And they're like, what do you mean I'm not charging enough? Because what are our competitors charging? And like, well, guess what? They're not charging enough. Either. I think having clarity around your numbers and understanding what the price needs to be in order to achieve um, a certain amount of profitability, that's fundamental. And you can't go below that. If you, and if you go below that, then it's coming out of your pocket. So it's important that people understand that. I think, so once you understand that price point, then you can add an extra margin on top, which you could apply to, uh, or you could add as a discount or whatever. And if they don't want to take a discount, then fine, you've got more profit in your business. I want to talk a little bit about like delivering on the service. So let's say in that instance, you just gave, we've got a air conditioning business that an installation and you've been able to, it was 2000 bucks. And you said to them, you know what, we can save you 15% on this um, today. And people are like, sure, let's do that. Let's say, and in six months time, you go back as part of that service agreement and you change the filters, you do whatever you do to like a service on the, on the, on the unit. And then another six months time as part of the service agreement, you do it again. So you're doing two of them in a year. Yep. Now, let, like throwing in, I suppose, the cost of that. So sending a technician out to the job, obviously paying their wage, paying for the, the, the products, paying for the, the, the time, you know, whatever. Like, I guess you have to build that into initial price, right? You do, but you also need to understand that this is a lot of, if you live and die trying to make money selling your core offer, you're going to go out of business. Your core right. offer is your tune up. So right? are you, are you, are you effectively saying that like it's an opportunity to get in there and look for other problems? Exactly. That's the right. whole point of that. It's, yeah. it's like for a builder to get into their home every year to be able to look and see like if that basement's not finished, I don't know if there's basements in Australia, there are here in the US, if that basement's not finished, like that's an opportunity for them to upsell getting their basement finished, right? It's, it's an opportunity to upsell to, and you're not just trying to freaking take money from your customers, you're providing them value. Mm. 
every single time. That's all it is. It's repetition. It's, hey, I noticed that I noticed that there's mold developing in, in the air condenser or in your um, air handler. And uh, this can be extremely uh, detrimental to your guys' health. Um, would you guys like us to, to clean up the mold in there? And we also have this, this uh, UV ray. There's different, all kinds of UV products that you can put in a heating air conditioning system that help prevent mold developing in their system. So that gives you an opportunity to upsell like something like that, right? And as a member of the program, would they get a special rate for doing that? Like a, you know, like the, the, the red carpet kind of treatment? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I recommend that if you don't, you're missing out. Like again, it, so the reason the discount model is so powerful that's mixed in with the, the maintenance agreement is it gets people to decide like, like when you're a member, you're just like, okay, I'm, I need to take advantage of what I'm paying for. If I don't, then it becomes that pain again of like, I'm paying for this thing and I'm not utilizing it. And like realistically, like if you do a good job and I'll talk about, you know, some of our builder clients out there, like these guys just build these incredible homes. And like, I, I mean, I've, I've, we've created projects for them. I've seen the jobs. Like it's absolutely mind blowing, like the product and the clients are just over the moon. They're so ecstatic. Like, and so, and where I'm going with this is, you know, the first time you rock up to, to meet the client at their home, it's very much a case of, Oh, hi. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm Bob. I'm, I'm the builder here, blah, blah, whatever. Uh, and the customer's like, Oh, okay. Hi. And there's like guards up. And then once they've handed the home over and they've got this amazing finished product, it's like, Bob, bring it in brother. Like there's, yeah. you know, like there's yeah. a relationship. Like people love the guy that just created this amazing home for them. Yeah. And you know, you're almost part of the family. So getting back in the door, Huh. Once, you know, once you're in that situation is considerably easy. It's almost like you're being invited back in with open arms, you know, for, for dinners yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And th th that does happen. Like, I've got <laughs> builder clients that, you know, they, you know, when they hand the job over, they've, you know, they've got their little handover package, which is like a bottle of, you know, uh, Veuve Clicquot and, you know, the, the keys all wrapped up nicely and all this kind of stuff. And then the client's got these boxes of wine for them and all this stuff. They're like, this is amazing, you know, like, yeah. like it does happen. I think like getting back in the door is, is quite easy and therefore yeah. maybe selling a service agreement or adding value in, in that way could be quite easy also. Yeah. And a part of that gift for like first home or like for the home buyer, you know, give them the, give them all those gifts. And then part of that gift say, Hey, they're your first year of service agreements on us. Right. Right. It's, it's free after that. Like it's one ninety nine a year and, we'll have a guy come out and change all the filters for you and check all the batteries in your, in your, um, smoke alarms, whatever. Like, I don't yeah. know. Something like that. Right. Well, I mean, that's a really good point. I mean, I mean, you look at somebody that's just spent, you know, 300,000, 400,000, a million bucks on a home. Like really, are they really going to bat an eyelid at 200 bucks a year to have the same builder who built the home come out and inspect things? I mean, give me a break. Like it's, like it, that, that is like the most ultimate security that you could ever imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love that. that, man. I, I, I haven't even, I haven't even thought about talking to home builders. So like talking about this is kind of opening my eyes, like, holy crap, <laughs> it's even applicable in more industries than I realized. Like we were just looking at like plumbers, HVAC, like we sell the mm. bike shops, we sell the auto shops, we sell the like, things but like home builders i've never even like considered so I think it's really cool. so like and let's let's take you know that example into into a plumbing company and i've worked in plumbing companies that have done this i've got lots of colleagues and friends out there that, that do it also and they use their service agreement for you know it's a matter of okay well we just did your tap washes for you or we just did your hot water heater or whatever um as part of the service agreement we're going to come out and we can uh, electrical checkups or whatever it is, uh, you know, block drains is a big one, you know, and, you know, for guys that have block drains at their property, like that's something that most people do not want to experience more than once, you know, like it's ugly. And so, you know, being able to say, well, you know what, as part of the membership program, we come out and we'll, we'll, we'll inspect this every six months for you and it won't cost you anything. If we have to do the job, we'll charge you, of course, but 
um, we'll do the inspection for nothing. And if we don't, if there's nothing that needs to be done, then we'll walk away. If it needs to be done, we'll do it for you, but you still get the discount rate. And that works really well for a lot of the maintenance plumbers out there. And, and I think the paradigm shift, and I've sat in these, I've sat in these workshops with these guys like, and no offense to the, to the North American audience, but like some of these guys pitching these products out there, you know, they're like, Oh yeah. You know, I went in there and there was a guy who, you know, like we walked into the house cause they had leaky taps and we saw that their toilet was three years old. So we recommended they get a new one. I'm like, shut up. Like really just shut up. Like some things are just ridiculous. But I think, you know, when you can say, well, okay, realistically this could be like we're, we're avoiding an impending disaster here and you're not even like trying to sell them anything you're just trying to help them avoid a really really uncomfortable situation like yeah. that's super valuable all right well i think we've um oh actually the one thing i did want to cap off, cap off uh cover off on was in relation to the series that i did um going back a little bit um on how to sell your business one of the things that got brought up about service agreements was the liability aspect of it and this is something i had never thought about before but you know if somebody's potentially looking to acquire your company and you've got say a thousand service agreements where people have paid an upfront price for three years and you've got effectively you know a thousand people there that you've got a service on a pro on a product that's already been paid for like from an acquirer's point of perspective that's a massive liability so like holy shit we've got like a thousand service agreements and we've got to go, we've got to get, we've got to service those, those people and it's already been paid for. Where's the money going to come from? What's your experience with selling the membership programs in a matter, in a format that is first of all, not going to become a massive hemorrhage. And second of all, it is like deliverable from a business perspective. Yeah, no, that's a great, that's a great question. So I actually see a lot of people make, a mistake that I, that you would think is not a mistake. So we'll use heating and air companies. They sell service agreements and typically they're, they're like a three to five year contract. Right. And I actually recommend you don't do three to five year contracts. You should do annual yeah. annual contracts. One, because it's, it's way less of a barrier of entry for that customer. They don't feel like that, like, there's not going to be an objection there. It's going to renew. It auto renews every year. Like that's part of, that's what's in the actual legal agreement that they agree to when they sign up. It, it, it should say something along the lines like this will auto renew unless you basically tell us to cancel or you request to cancel the, the program or the plan. So making sure that you're not charging up front for three to five years because some companies do that that's where you're going to get in trouble. Just do it annually. Because if you sell annual plans, most likely the company acquiring you will have the funds to be able to service that next year for those, those agreements. Now, if you go out of business, then you're in trouble. And in your agreement, you need to have somewhere in there that like, mm. that you need to have a clause that covers your butt, basically. I think it's a very like, and that gives credit credibility to the, to what the, like the last podcast I, I did on that, like how to sell your trade business. And, you know, Brandon was saying that same thing. He says, whatever you do, don't, don't extend it beyond a year because a year is manageable. A year is serviceable. He says, if you go beyond a year, it can get a little bit cagey. Totally. Yeah. An expectation of it going beyond a year, even if you just promise a year, but if there's an expectation of like, we're going to do this forever, you're just going to piss people off. And, and I know that because I actually in the bike shop that I grew up working in, we sold discount plans. Well, they just went out of business two years ago. And these discount plans were lifetime plans. They sold oh them like, God. they were lifetime plans. Well, they went out of business and they just had so many people pissed off. So yeah, just be careful with what you're also like, what kind of perceived time frame are you selling to people? So. Yeah interesting all right that was great i think we'll wrap this one up uh, that was brilliant though so we were talking in that episode um for those of you that tuned in late the um how to sell your membership programs service agreements uh, mm -hmm. to your customers uh, it stemmed on from the first episode where we were talking about uh how to uh, the three types or the different types of membership programs and then in the next episode we're going to be talking about 
how to play the long game with it and see it as an actual valid, a valid uh, strategy for your business. Because I think that kind of stems on from what we just said then about, you know, the one year, you know, the one year service agreement. I think, you know, it's fine. Have a one year service agreement, but also have like, have a long-term plan for this. Totally. All right, cool. Thanks for your time, mate. Is there anything else you wanted to add to that? No, well, just one thing. We, we didn't tap on like, how do you market this? So I think we'll talk about that in the next episode. Talk about how to sell it. Selling it's like really crucial, but I also have some secrets about how do you market this to a cold audience and uh, how, do you, how do you market and sell it to a cold audience online? So we'll get into that in the next one for sure. Okay, cool. Well, maybe we're going to start the next episode with that. So we'll leave you with a bit of a cliffhanger there, folks. In the next episode, we're going to talk about how to market it. <laughs> Rock and roll. Thanks, mate. Um, we'll be back soon with the third and final episode. For you guys out there, make sure you tune into that because um, we've just left you with a beautiful cliffhanger there. And that's a wrap. Booyah. Thank you for listening to another episode of Toolbox Talks. If you're liking what you hear, then you can head across to the siteshed.com where you can join our community by signing up to our Toolbox Talks. Uh, you'll get sent a weekly notification, which is basically a highlight of everything that we've spoken about during that week, along with any other industry news that may be relevant or specific to the trades. If you're enjoying the show, you can head across to iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud where you can leave us a review. Uh, that would be fantastic, and all the reviews get read out in the show. Uh, likewise, if you have any friends or colleagues that you think would benefit from the show and the, the episodes that we create, then please go ahead and share it with them.